The Apple Vision Pro is absolutely stunning in ways that I never experienced, but also it's more limiting, I think, than others are letting on. And after four days of using the Vision Pro, I have so many thoughts swirling around in my head that it's difficult to actually organize them into a single video. So I think in this video, I just wanna tell you what it's like to just use the Vision Pro, how it feels, how to move stuff around, where eye tracking comes up short and other little tidbits. There are so many other things I want to tell you about like watching videos or playing games or about working from the Vision Pro, but that's going to have to be in the next video. So let's get started with the general use of this device, starting with the hardware. The hardware is so much more complex than any other piece of Apple hardware. You have the main device, which is the brains, the screens, the cameras, the sensors, the fans, plus there's speakers hanging off of this thing. You have the light seal with so many different sizing options, and there are two sizes of light cushions for each light seal. It comes with two different headbands, one that looks cool and wraps around your skull with a neat tightening knob, and one that does not look as cool, but has two different Velcro straps, which for many is more comfortable. There's a big old battery with a long cable that you have to click into the side of the headband, and then there's the front glass protector. And don't forget, there are eyeglass inserts as well. This is so far beyond what Apple hardware has been in the past. The next closest thing is probably the Apple Watch, which currently has three different Apple Watch sizes, plus a couple of different bands, but nowhere near the customizable components of the Apple Vision Pro which does make this a little bit cumbersome to use, store, and move around. Sure, you can get the giant marshmallow travel case, but have you seen all the effort needed to pack and unpack this thing? It's crazy, and it is way more effort than just using a phone that you pull from your pocket or a tablet that you pull from a bag. I'm not saying it's awful, just something to think about. Using the Apple Vision Pro has been both exactly like what others have said and also nothing like what they've said. First, the Vision Pro windows are so crazy good looking. Whether it's the home screen, a Safari web page, notes, video apps, whatever, the windows look super sharp and clear and so lifelike that you can get right up to them with your face and it looks amazing. There's no screen door effect like other VR devices and the text is readable without any caveats. I do though get quite a bit of lens flare when watching videos that can be distracting, especially when watching something inside a dark immersive environment. I find myself moving my head around, trying to lessen the streaks that I see in the video, and it seems to happen more on the bottom half of the lenses. And I did try this with and without my prescription drop-in lenses, and the results were the same. Moving windows around is easy and awesome. You can put them anywhere you want, literally. You can resize them, push them further away or bring them in, place them in another room to come back to later, and just walking around them and looking at the sides or back is a trip. You can actually reach out and touch the windows, which blew my mind. You can type on the keyboard or swipe and scroll on pages, and it's pretty cool. When you're working and surrounded by a whole bunch of virtual windows with the Apple Vision Pro, you'll find that it is a different working experience than just using a single or even multiple external monitors with your computer. You do need to make more of a deliberate effort to turn your head or to turn your body to see the other windows all the way around you and when you might have a number of windows right in front of you on a 27 inch display, to see all that same content, you have to look much further up and down and around. Is this a more efficient way to work? Uh, TBD. It is surprising that a company that pioneered multi-touch on devices was not able to get multi-touch input for typing at least at launch, but I would not be surprised if we saw it in about a year or maybe less, who knows. Eye and hand tracking have been really great as well. Not perfect, but probably better than you expect it to work. Sometimes when looking at smaller objects, it will get a little confused or you'll have to look in a direction that's not exactly where you want to get something selected. But overall, when it's working normally, it's almost magical, like just moving around between applications on the home screen or switching to different buttons or text fields. It all just works pretty darn well. It takes just a little while to adjust to moving with your eyes instead of moving your head all the time. But once you get it, it just feels right. And the slight issues that we have now will probably continue to get better over time. I did find that I had issues registering pinching initially because I wanted to hold my hands more in a relaxed state. So the system just could not understand or see that I was pinching. So I had to learn to rotate my wrists a bit so that the sensors could get a good look at my thumb and pointers coming together. But once you get it, it's super easy to swipe and zoom and scroll. It's very much like using an iPad. And I really wanted to grab the bar at the bottom of the window and swipe up to close it like on an iPad. And I kept like throwing the window at my face, which can be jarring. 
If I'm surrounded by windows in my office or in my living room, and I need to go across the room or somewhere else to grab something, I find myself being very careful around the virtual windows in my environment. Like, I think I'm going to hit them when I walk towards them. I have to make a conscious effort to know that they're fake and move through them because they look so good, which is a contrast with the pass-through environment. The pass-through environment just looks bad. Of course, nothing else compares to what this can offer, but it's still not great like some of the reviewers and some of the videos Apple posted made it look. It's noisy. The HDR of your real environment is not great. It's like iPhone 10 maybe. And overall, the picture is soft and fuzzy. I can barely read anything on another screen like if I pick up my phone. I need to hold it way out and squint a lot just trying to understand what is on the phone. And there's a lot of motion blur when moving around. On the other hand, I have not felt sick or queasy or motion sick one time since using this including up to a couple hours at a time, where with older devices like the Quest 2 or even back with the Google Cardboard, I did get sick after a while. The digital crown on top allows you to go into immersive environments that Apple has set up by default, so you can work from Yosemite or the moon or other places. You can turn the crown to be more or less immersed in the environment, including the sounds around you. Apple also has immersive video demos in the Apple TV app that you can watch that are almost mind-blowing. And when in certain games, you can be completely engrossed in the environment all on your own. And the most impressive thing is that these environments don't stutter or lag or break up. The tracking is so good, you just really can't believe it. You wanna start walking around in them, but unfortunately, no support for that yet. And the last thing I have to say about general usage is that the Vision Pro has been fairly buggy for me. I will frequently go back into an app that I had previously used and find it completely frozen. In some cases, the app seems to be working, but a game or video just will not start. For that, I need to hold down the two buttons on top to get a force quit screen to close the app. After that, I can start the app again and it will work. I've had a couple of issues where the thing just went completely unresponsive and I could not even get the home screen to come up and had to pull the battery out to reboot it. On another occasion, this thing would not boot at all and I got this picture on the outside display asking me to plug into a Mac. And this was before we even knew about a developer USB-C dongle thing. And then sometimes when putting the Apple Vision on my head, there's nothing displayed and the thing has to reboot. Hopefully this will get better quickly, but it has been interesting, I guess. In the last few days, I've been able to wear the Vision Pro for extended periods of time, sometimes between three to four hours with maybe a one to two or five minute break here and there. There hasn't been any time yet that I wasn't aware of this heavy thing on my face, including watching movies and shows, which side note, might be the best feature of the Vision Pro. It fits well and it's comfortable enough, but I'm always slightly relieved when I take it off, even though I find myself wanting to try it again in just a few minutes. Beyond the physical and mechanical aspects of using the Vision Pro, Vision OS is a lonely experience. There's so many cool features, functions, and interactions built into this machine that I wanna be able to share that with my wife and daughter, but I can't just quickly show them and let them in on the experience with me. You have two options to show some of the excitement. The first is screen recording or mirroring. You can record or airplay your Vision Pro to another device like an Apple TV to show someone a bit of what you're experiencing. And sure, that's fine, but people want to experience it in the Vision Pro. And I can't just hand the Vision Pro to them quickly so that they can quickly check it out. And the process of getting into guest mode is awful. First, you have to get this thing fitted and comfortable, which can take some time. Then the guest has to walk through a hand and eye tracking setup where you go around and pinch on a bunch of circles. You do that whole pinching thing two more times. Then finally you are in. It takes a few minutes. And that doesn't sound too bad when I say it out loud right here, except that they have to do it every single time they want to try my Vision Pro. My daughter's done the process about a dozen times now and I don't see her continuing to want to use it because it's a time suck. Apple really needs a way to save user profiles so that the same people who will use the device multiple times do not have to repeat the setup process every single time. This is too cumbersome for a $3,500 device and it shouldn't be limited to a single user. And even if somebody else did have one, you're still stuck in your own world and no way to share experiences like playing a game or watching a movie together. So after four days of using the Apple Vision Pro, Pro, I can absolutely see the upsides and the appeal of having experiences that you don't get from any other computing device. The immersion that you get from games and movies, 
surpass everything that I've ever tried except for those big 3D rides at amusement parks. I have so many other thoughts to share with you about watching content and playing games. So if you have questions, you know what to do. Trying to actually work from the Vision Pro has been a bit of a mixed bag for me so far, and I find it hard to justify over just using a regular large external display, but I will definitely have more thoughts on that as well. The size and form factor is just a bit bulky to wear and carry around, making it inconvenient. Plus, it's a bit sad to be the only one to have it. However, I see the potential for future iterations that cost less, weigh less, and offer more. So, what do you all think about the Apple Vision Pro? Is this the future of computing, or will this forever be a temporary entertainment device? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see another option for working on the go that may be a better fit than an Apple Vision Pro, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.